to order at 7 01, and Summer's going to put the camera on. Sorry? fastest meeting ever. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I'm not exactly positive what happened in the last week, but um, I've been told I need to come in and, and, and defend, I guess, our program. I don't feel I need to defend our program. I think, frankly, our program speaks for itself. Um, we have 100 or more kids from our community and surrounding communities that use our program. Um, we have uh, done a pretty good job with um, being revenue neutral. But, but I would like to, uh, I'll backtrack a second. You guys weren't here four years ago when this process all started, when I walked through the door and I was very angry about the previous select board members discontinuing our program. Um, and at the time, Suzanne asked for, I believe, two things. You might have to refresh my memory, but one of them was a safe program. I think we have 100% done that. We have made a very safe program with She's highly organized, and we've done a great job with that. The other thing that she asked of us was to be revenue neutral. Now, we haven't done that. We've been close, and, and I just asked Celia for those numbers. Um, our last three summers have cost the town less than $10,000. So that is essentially <coughs> less than one year of any previous year that this program has been offered. Um, but I would like to go a different route in that, you know, you are all a new select board. Suzanne is no longer here. You have an opportunity to make recreation something that this, this town values and values not only financially, but by your backing um, the community. And, you know, I came in here kind of with an idea in that, you know, let's say we take out teen camp. And I'm okay with that, because teen camp is, was a lot of work for myself um, individually. But I think we have about roughly $13,000 in there, right, Miles? So, you know. So here's my thought. Why don't we take that $13,000, remove it from a team camp, and hire a rec director? Use that money to go down an avenue that this town has never done. And frankly, I think it needs it. Um, I, I personally believe if you discontinue rec in this town, that goes down a slippery slope of school use and you know, you got no kids using the school at all in the summers. Then, then you start that that ongoing debate within this town a little bit more about why do we have the school here. So now we're only using 
the school nine months out of the year instead of 12. Um, you know, our program is, is beneficial to a lot of people. Um, it's cheap, not cheap, it's inexpensive. It's, yeah. it's organized. Um, we go on field trips twice a week. Open meeting? It is. Yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, the school becomes a center of a gathering every single day. Parents come in, they drop off their kids, they chit chat with other parents, they come in later, they pick up their kids, they chit chat. Um, kids from the school, my kids, Celia's kids, they get together, um, they interact in the summer. You know, I, I don't need to tell you how, how tough it is right now with kids and exercise and obesity problems and cell phone use um, this is our way of getting our children in this community off of cell phones, off of um, media, and interacting with each other. And that, I think, is far more important than really anything else going on right now. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys saw uh, the paper today. So, this is my father. 81 years old, flew to Finland to compete in the World Senior Games, and came back actually with a gold medal. He plays, he plays basketball three times a week at the McConnell Center at 81. He's had two hip replacements. Um, athletics are very important to him. It's clearly come down to my keeping kids physically fit and physically active. It's a huge part of my life. Um, we try to do that at rec. It's, it's become an issue, I have to tell you. It's harder and harder to get kids motivated to do physical fitness. And, and I've talked to several other rec programs, Summersworth in particular, I just talked to her a couple days ago, and she said the same thing. It's hard to get these kids motivated to actually do things. And we saw that at teen camp this year, and Fridays were a problem, because my, my vision was, let's get kids working out and sweaty and hot and then go to the pool. Well, then kids stop showing up for sweaty and hot and just start showing up for the pool. So there's, there's some figuring out that we need to do, but that's beside the point. Um, you know, what, what I think is important is what my dad will tell you about Dover. When he was a child, he speaks about it all the time. And I know we can't go back there, but everything recreation was free when he was a kid. There were free swimming lessons. There was free park and rec. There was even a free bus that drove around the town and picked up kids and dropped them off at schools or dropped them off at Bellamy for swim lessons and then brought them back home. I know that's not realistic, but you know I think we need to make this a part of what you guys all want for our community. And, and you know, honestly, as far as, as budget goes, we're not spending a lot of town money. We are using you, you know? But we're not spending a lot of town money. And if we have a rec director, maybe that takes off some of your burden and your time. Okay. <laughs> I, I haven't said your... I think I said my piece. Okay. Well, I wrote mine down. Um, <laughs> Just so I can How many it. pages? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, maybe you should just vote Ah, I have a big Dear members of the flood board, I'm here today to discuss why I feel it is important to put off the decision of canceling the summer rec programs and to continue the support of the program both financially as well as with administrative support if warranted. Well, I realize you are balancing a lot and have to make tough decisions regarding the town, I would like to share some of the positive things this, about this program. I also would like to enlighten you um, about changes and progress that are being worked on to correct missteps and grow the program. Before I go into why this program is so important to the community now, I want to share with you some of the history. Um, for many people who grew up in this town or have lived here for several years, um, no, this program is a staple of the community. This program has been in the community for over a generation, dating back 
minimally 20 years. Several communities around us have their own programs as well. Yet, over time, ours has remained the best value, as we have tried to ensure that everyone in the community has a place to go during the summer. Years ago, this program was won by the gym teacher at the school. The day, um, the day of a camper included physical activities in the morning, like big basketball, a break after lunch, a break for lunch after which campers came back in the afternoon to play more team games like softball on the field at the school. Enrichment activities were like learning to fish were offered some years by local community members also. On bad weather days, the camp did not take place. Each day, the staff was afforded a lunch break as all the campers left for a mandated time to get their own lunch at home or elsewhere. Many people in this community have fond memories of the camp from different perspectives, including parents and campers. However, time have changed, and as a society, we have become more suspicious of each other, and laws have changed to reflect the times we live in. There are no longer as many parents who are at home during the day that can come and get their children and their friends at lunchtime and return them for another fun-filled afternoon. It, was, it is also difficult in these current times for families to have an inconsistent program which shuts down on bad weather days. Yet, these programs do exist in some surrounding communities like Dover with their parks and playgrounds program. Parents these days must work to make a living, often with both parents working to make ends meet. With work schedules that require them to be away from their children and homes during the day, the committee has adjusted our program to cover a 10-hour chunk, chunk of the day in when most people work. Tuition covers the hours of 9 to 4, and there are additional hours from 7.30 to 9, as well as 4 to 5.30 p.m. at an additional cost. The program now runs no matter the weather and without a break for lunch. Hence, all of these conveniences are important to offer the local families that benefit the community as well as address some of the changes in our society. The tuition and cost of extended care is where most of the money made from this program comes from. Besides working to meet the needs of parents, I have also seen this committee work diligently to meet the requests of select boards. Past boards have placed reducing the financial burden on the town and ensuring safety of the campers onto the committee. During the last three years since the group came together, we have created a program in which we covered 90% of the way, or that we we have uh, we've created a program in which we are not over 90% of the way there on the financial aspect. The team program run by the committee has made a profit for the two years it's been in existence. Well, that is the goal with the camp for the younger kids. Each year we have fallen a few thousand dollars short. This past season in 2019 was the largest gap at roughly $4,000. Looking back over the last three years, and ex the last three years, and especially at the budgets, the committee has stayed within our budget allotted amount for two out of the three years. The, two, the 2019 season was the first year we went over the allotted budget amounts um, with this group. There are a few reasons why it was difficult to stay within our budget this year, from not getting as many grants to hiring additional staff to accommodate our high enrollment and beyond. No matter how, many, how close the deficit was, adjustments were made to try and close the gap. A close examination has also taken place at the end of the season to clearly understand in which areas our deficits can be fixed. The town has supported this program for years with amounts that can be seen allocated in the town reports. Nonetheless, tracking the funds received is difficult at this time, as until three years ago, this program held its own accounts and were not audited like it is now. The overall impact of $1,000 to $4,000 per year this program has overextended is probably a very small percentage of the town's total budget. It has been the practice of this committee to keep the town involved and aware of the possible shortfalls in our budget. To compensate for some of the shortfalls, committee members have solicited donations to support the program and offset certain costs. I wonder if a survey was done for the duration of the program, how much would have been invested in the program over the 20 years by whom, and the transparency provided to this and other community officials. Speaking from a business perspective, 
This is still a young program or business that is coming closer and closer to the goal set by a previous board. This, if this is looked at from a strictly business standpoint, these programs are in year two and three of the first five. Most successful businesses do not turn a profit until year five. With the deficits in these programs being less than $4,000 per year in the first three years, it sounds like the work put into making these programs financially sound has made them has headed them in the right direction. In the short time that this program has been under the revitalized committee, many issues have been addressed to ensure the safety and the well-being of campers. But it's still a work in progress, and each year we learn more about where missteps have been taken. And at the end of the season, we have a recap to focus on areas needing improvement and take action. In some instances, we have gotten Ahead, out ahead of the issues to ensure that the issues are resolved before campers arrive. On the other hand, hindsight is twenty twenty, and can provide a great reflection on where future resources should be targeted. We, as a town, committee, and camp, are not the only ones facing these similar issues. After our most recent recap for the 2019 survey, another committee member reached out to some surrounding communities to find out they're facing similar issues. In the past, this committee has reached out to other towns and was able to draw upon their experiences, share resources, and learn how to handle situations that have arisen across the board. Now that these connections have been made, reaching out to these other communities is a tool to use when trying to determine the best course of action or practice to improve our programs. Every time there is a hiccup brought to our attention, a remedy is found as quickly as possible. Therefore, the committee has created and utilized the policies, procedures, forms, handbooks, and other materials that are already at our fingertips. These documents can be provided to the members of the board or community as requested. If there is something that should be there but is not, I and possibly some of the other members on this committee will try to ensure what is needed gets added. Having access to this information and continuing to work with the connections we have built previously allows us to move forward with a small group of people. The group can continue to troubleshoot problems as they arise, as well as draw on our experience and knowledge of doing this for the last few years to push us towards a better program. Although there was a, a bigger group in the past to run the program, a lot of the foundation work was done by a core group that is still part of this group today. Therefore, a smaller group has its own benefits, as, um, like not being as convoluted and can work as a well-oriented machine when it comes to our programs. Looking at towns around us, many of them have smaller groups that run their recreation programs. Usually there's a small group of people that are committed to working on programs, and those individuals will cover each other and utilize volunteers. Many of the communities around us have one person that oversees their members and volunteers, enabling that one person to have the position as rec director or coordinator is sometimes is something previous boards have suggested and one of the future goals I would like to see come about personally. To me, having a rec director could alleviate many issues. First, if the person worked for a few hours a month, year round, some of the tasks being placed on the town officials and the rec committee could be taken on by this staff member. Having a paid staff member in this position would reduce the number of times the committee has to come before this board with purchase orders um, as the person may be allotted a credit card. In turn, purchases for the rec programs, including summer camps, could be prearranged and coordinated by this person ahead of time. The rec director would also work alongside the other staff here at, town office, at the town office to ensure everything is in compliance and necessary information is shared. Here is another reason why getting the budget correct and eventually making a profit would benefit all of us. There are numerous benefits for the children when they attend camp. Benefits go beyond the children to the families and the communities they live in. I recognize the benefits of having a safe place for the children in the community to go and have fun. Hopefully, other people in the community do too. Summer camps allow children to connect on many levels, including with nature, each other, and other community members. Camp offers children a chance to unplug from their devices. Our society is now glued to. Camps provide a chance for children to grow personally and socially, as well as model healthy living habits and team building experiences. 
When children attend camp, social skills self -comp and self-confidence can improve. Camp can also prevent some academic slides that usually happen over the summer. If you have any doubts about the benefit benefits of the camp, I suggest you or Google benefits to the camp. With that all said, I will ask all of you to think about where you would want your kids or the kids in your neighborhood to be during the summer. Every year, these camps have allowed between 80 and 150 children in this community and the surrounding communities to have a safe, fun, supervised, and somewhat structured place to go in the summer. Now that, now take that away as proposed tonight by cutting the budget. Where and what are those children going to do every day of the summer? Some of them will be at home plugged into their electronics all day long. Some will get together with friends, which could, to, could lead to bad decision making as their brains are still forming rational thoughts. Yet others will be forced to go to other towns where they will not have nearly as many people they know by their sides. How many more pages, Celia? Just this is the last page. Still others will be left without much of an option as this program was the only one their families could afford. Hence, I ask all of you to step into my shoes or that of another community member or a parent in this community. Where would you prefer to have your child in the summer? How are you going to pay for it? Are you going to lean towards a camp close to your home? Where are you and your child? Are you going to go to a camp close to your home where you and your children know others? Or are you going to send them to a place where you and your children know very few people? Now imagine there is no place to go. How do you feel about going to another town? What accommodations are you going to have to make to cover the additional costs that the surrounding towns charge? How do you feel about giving your money to another town when it could be supporting this community where you live? If you cannot afford camp, what are you going to do? How many more children will be running around the town causing mischief with the local authorities and their neighbors having to deal with them? As you consider this decision and whether or not you should continue these programs, I urge you to ask yourself the benefits of these programs and what they are providing to the community, the businesses in the area, families, and children of the town. While you're thinking about this, I respectfully ask that you remember the children of this community do not have a say like the rest of us. They cannot vote and often are at the mercy of those entrusted with their care to think about their needs as well as those that are voting for themselves. Thank you very much. Anything else? That's the case. You don't want the topic? Uh, no, because I'll put it in the minutes. Okay. It's going to be like kind of cool. Anything else? No. Any questions? Do you do anything? <laughs> so, <laughs> when do you think you'll make a decision about keeping this in the budget or not? I believe that we probably need to have three members attendance to have made that decision at this point. Yeah. So, I want to make sure that all three of them, each probably would be the next meeting, I would like it. I don't know, it's coming on meeting. I'm not sure. Is it the same thing? Yeah. It's, it's the next budget know. workshop. It's the next budget workshop, so. Yeah. Good. Okay? All right. Thank you. Or are you just here to listen? Oh, I came, uh, came in. I might speak. I'm not sure yet. There's <laughs> community input at the beginning of the and meeting. And then at the end. end. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, Mark?
inspection. There was some breaks and some other small maintenance items they had to do. So it's purchase order 1754, uh, City of Dover, for all of our inspections <coughs> and some minor uh, repairs they had to do for total 33937. <coughs> so we'll purchase order 1754 to the City of Dover for 33937 for vehicle inspections and repairs. I second it. All right, any further discussion? Yep. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Go ahead, Mom. The next one you kind of coincided with. Okay. You already have the, P the uh, invoice for this one. This is for the tires, Carolyn. Yes. Um, engine one, we did have new rear tires, four new tires. Well, we discussed this before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Took them a while to get it in. The truck went up last Friday, got the new tires put on. It's out of Central Tire, Sanford, Maine. The only way it was going to pass inspection was to replace the tires. So, like everything else, they're never cheap on a large vehicle like that. So, uh, the four rear tires have since been done. $2,310.70. All right, move purchase order 1759 to Central Tire. $2,310.70 for your tires for one. All right, I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Like <coughs> all the vehicles now, they're all inspected. They all have their stickers on them. All the repairs have been done, so there's still some money left in the vehicle repair line. Should we have anything else pop up in the next couple of months? Hopefully that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Some of the unforeseen stuff that we raised mm -hmm. so far this year. Uh, the next one I have is number 1758. It's for positive promotion. It's for the uh, fire prevention education material, which we order for the uh, day that we spend at the uh, grade school, which is Thursday. Dave is organizing that. It's got uh, some other members that go to the grade school and spend the whole day there from the, the kindergarten up to the sixth grades. Um, they have uh, all kinds of different events they have to do. They do a muster, they do a lot of demonstrations. Of course, take them out and show them the equipment, just do general overall safety stuff. We also have uh, extra supplies in here that we put to some of the local daycares that come and ask for us. And those of you that have been to the breakfast, you see them sitting on the table, mm -hmm. handouts and stuff that we get for the club there. And um, the, uh, again, our sale is 1758, the amount is 727.90.
1755 to New Hampshire State Fireman's Association for $540 for membership dues. I second it. Any further discussion? Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, this one, Carolyn, I'm going to put the packet in here. You want to mail it out? All the stuff that's in there and check those in there, all the updated forms. Because we have such a transient staff that are coming and going. So every year there's a half a dozen of these I got to delete and I got to add. Mm -hmm. But we need to keep it up, up to date. We are having issues. discussion a couple of weeks ago on our wanting to add the I am responding uh, software and dispatch and alert system upgrade to our dispatching services. That still in the works. Um, they ran into some glitches that were unforeseen. As always, you know, I always seem to have to come and carry that. Uh, what happened was they were supposed to have us up and running about 10 days ago and they're still waiting for basically what they need is a software update. We were under the impression that Dover Dispatch, with all their millions that they spent a year and a half ago, uh, everything would be top notch, highest tech, the whole bit. Well, we found a glitch in their system. And actually, uh, it was probably a good thing for them as well as us. So they took their CAD system, CAD is computer aided dispatch, that they had in the old dispatch center out of City Hall, moved it to the new one in the police station. And when they were updating the rest of their equipment, with, they put new towers, they put new repeaters. Everything that we were involved with when we were still trying to switch out a year ago, when we were trying to upgrade our radio. But with all this being done, they said, Jeff, we can take care of it. We'll put your new alert system in. Well, there's one piece of software that they do not have. So it did not make the two systems compatible. So we've had a, a week's worth of phone calls and texts and everything else between QED, which is the company that makes the software, and their CAD system manager, and their tech people in Dover to get this all to fit. It can be done. What's going to happen is for the software to upgrade it, we're going to purchase it ourselves through the fire department. It's going to be installed in their dispatch system. It'll link all the parts and components together, and then our new alert system will be up and running by telling this week. So the new software, I got it on purchase order for seventeen fifty six. Number seventeen fifty six. It's five hundred bucks that we need to spend. We're going to own it. It's going to be ours. And the other thing that uh, I found out the other day having some conversations with the Dover Fire Department is they're actually, because of these missing software that they thought they had, they're actually in the process of updating their whole CAT system. So they wrote a set of specs, they put it out into the technology world, and they've got four vendors that are going to come back to do uh, presentations on upgrading their whole CAT system. Because when they thought they were way ahead, they're actually not. They're actually pretty far behind. So they're going to spend their money to do that. We're going to jump ahead and have our eyes up and running. And once they get through these, there's four different companies that are going to present. And once they decide on who's going to do it, they're going to upgrade their whole system. It's going to take over a year, probably closer to two. We're going to get our stuff up and running. They've already guaranteed me that when this happens, they get their whole new system up. We'll be integrated into it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's always something. It went back to like that time we were talking about radios. Remember I came in and goes, we've got to spend $40,000 for all this stuff. You remember that back then a year or two ago? We got that down to, to uh, very small numbers. So that's where we have to go with that. They weren't willing to fund the software. Because basically it services our needs. Only us. Yes. So we had a discussion there. Field captain's need is Google. He oversees that section through the police department because the police department controls the dispatch center. So we had a couple of conversations and basically that's where it came out. So. But it sounds like you're saying this is a one-time purchase. One time. What, I've, been assured, I've been assured by this gentleman, Dave Varney, who is the president of QED, which is another dispatching aid. And they're the ones that are going to put the software together and integrate it all into their system make sure we're all up and running. That's all we need. This is all you're going to have to do. And in order for us to move forward, they're actually, actually already doing it. They're getting the stuff for us so we can get it done. So it's a $500 one-time cost. We're going to take it out of the radio equipment line item that we were kind of using. So 
basically some of what's happened with that is we took something else out of that uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, to fill in the rest of all our ligaments and uh, there's still plenty within that line. Once we get this stuff all up and running and done, then we'll know if we can go get those portables, which is what it's for. So we're on the cusp of that. So that's where we are with software stuff. I'm not the huge guru of that. Luckily, we have somebody who's part of our team with that. Mm -hmm. And he did a lot of these check-ins on us and stuff. He may even go over to Dover when they do their um, the presentations or the updates. Because he was, he wrote, he's written and been involved in this stuff. He just came back from New York City. He helped New York City Fire Department with last year in May. Mm -hmm. So I talked to Dover and they invited him over and said, well, we need somebody like that in case there's something we forget. A la mix. So Sean's going to partake in a little bit of that because he's a guru of that stuff. Mm -hmm. One move purchase order 1756 to QED, Dave Barney, uh, for $500 for an IM versus on the cell phone. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. No? All those in favor say aye. Aye. The station looks so good now with the new lot and the, all that painted out and the signs been cleaned up. Well, I've got a couple of quotes for painting the outside of our station. So the, uh, the new section's all vinyl and it's all wrapped. There's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. But the out back is all block, cinder block, <coughs> the uh, ice skating rink side, and then all around the doors. There's, there's stuff that needs to be paid attention to. We want to paint the exterior doors because those are all new ones. The hose tower. So there's not a lot of folks around who are going to go 40 feet up in the air and hang in to the hose tower. So I got a quote, and <coughs> I want to try. I want to move ahead with that. It's number 1757. It's going to be the, the Garrison Payne for four thousand dollars paint the inside of the fire station. To come out of the fire station uh, maintenance money item. Uh, we haven't spent any of that money yet. Uh, the rest of it's earmarked for some uh, work that Simo is going to do for us on the inside on some electrical upgrades. So we can do this until I'm going to And this will take care of everything for the fire station. As far as doing the cleaning, the prepping, it needs to be washed, paint the hose tower, two coats of paint all around the, uh, the doors on the front of the station. There's a small piece of trim that's starting to weather to crack and fall apart. Uh, the, uh, the sweeps and whatnot are starting to fail, so that's just going to cost us more heat. So we're going to clean all that stuff up. Um, like I said, paint exterior doors, hose tower, and the whole, basically it's station is just a brick part that we're going to do. And I think since I've been there, it's going to be done. Yeah, I figured you might have a better answer. I know the other stuff that I done on the inside was, the, yeah. was done by the convict crew. Yeah, inside. And there's no way that these guys are going to be able to do anything like yeah. that. So yeah. uh, I wanted to use these people here to get to them and I have their quotes and I compare it with some of the others. And It needs it. Just look at the firehouse in New York City. I was up on the roof the other day doing some of the prep work, and basically the paint on the upper end of the hose tower is non existent anymore to the point that some of the block is actually starting to deteriorate. And you get that green lichen stuff that wants to grow on it, so that penetrates into the mortar and starts eating that up. It's just going to lead to failure. So we clean a lot of that stuff up. So there is an amount of thirteen ninety six that has been tagged to the fire station. It might be the overhead door contract. Oh, probably exactly what it is. Okay, but you still have plenty of money. Right? Yeah, because it's seventy five. Yep. So we use that and that. And I still have the money that I want to have the electric done. So it's still good. What is the? Uh, you might as well vote on that. I think that's one of the biggest questions. Okay, so. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, what are the electrical upgrades? We need to have a dedicated 
outlet for when we purchase our air filling station. So that needs to be added. Is that a 220? Or is that? No, it's not a 220. It's just dedicated, okay. It's a single phase with a dedicated, dedicated circuit that has to be added. And that's going to be in the new section because we're cleaning the space up for it, but it does not have the proper connection right now, so that has to be taken care of. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add a 220 in the utility and the maintenance room, but we don't have a 220 in the station. So uh, other than, um, so we, really, we don't have a stove per se, except for the grills, which are gas fired. So we need the 220 for down the road. Actually, we had the guys in there doing the floors when we finished the floors in the training room and whatnot a day or two ago. They couldn't run their equipment because they didn't have the proper uh, electrical service for it. So I want to add a 220 in the maintenance room next to where the extractor is because uh, down the road we want to get a uh, dryer to help. You know, right now we wash our gear and does a great job of the extractor. We just hang it all over the place in the fire station, which is not the most efficient way to put it back into service. So we're going to get a dryer here down the road. How did we get one? Did we never get one? It was just the washer? number of pages to this and it's very specific how it's to be signed. Okay, so this is all the legalese of the contract itself. Um, <coughs> so Denise is, is going to sign on behalf of the board. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are a number of places to do that, and I would just have you, most of them are signature and then printed name and title. So if you could sign, sure and sign over here and then print okay. and title. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to give it to you one piece at a time. And you and review take this it. all? Yeah. And um, <coughs> I, I reviewed it over the phone with him, and it's pretty straightforward. Okay.
this is um, Exhibit A, which is a description of the equipment, which is um, the vehicle there, the year is blank. Um, we're leaving the location blank because it's not any different than our mailing address. So for you to sign again at the bottom. It's, it's a 2020 though, right? Um, <coughs> because they don't ever do that until it's delivered. Just so because they have, delivered. yeah. Okay. All right. Problems with not being exactly the same thing. <laughs> I know that's what yes, I wanted today. Please. Yes. The other side, same thing. This is your schedule of payments. Okay. And those all tie up. Tie up. All right. here exhibit C which we're not going to have you sign yet um, mm -hmm. we're going to do that when we take delivery of the vehicle okay um, that for exhibit C we're going to wait um, the opinion of counsel was waived in lieu of certified minutes so we're going to submit um, once the minutes are approved we'll have them notarized and sent on and it'll have the same effect um, of what the authorization that we're doing this of the of the um, legal opinion of um, the veracity of yes you voted for this and yes you're okay. approving of this so the March minutes um, I mean the March no um, tonight's minutes tonight's minutes of so we need to make a motion to do and accept it well we you did that last week but yes okay. actually it would probably okay. be prudent to do that. Um, Okay, so this is the lessee resolution. There's, so, um, so we are going to authorize, this is a little backwards that we're only just now doing this in Exhibit E, but we're going to write print your name and title mm -hmm. here, which mm -hmm. means that you are the authorized signer. Mm -hmm. Secondary to that, we're going to put Jessica because she's not here, because at the bottom, the person um, who's, um, attesting to this is Miles because he's the other board member there and he can't attest to himself. And be so yeah. we're going to write, if you would write your name and title in the top Printed. Line. Printed. This one. Yes. What is it? Self -care? Oh, it's a select board. Um, yeah, and then her name is there, Jessica. J E S S I C A. I C A. And her last name? W E L C H. Okay. Um, and then comma select board for her too. Yeah. Okay, and then. And Miles can do And this. then you're done, okay. and Miles, if you could write next to um, by, um, you're signing, and then under next to by, you're signing, and by the name, you print. And title. Put your name and title. So when that comes in, do I have to be here to sign that document at um, that time, or do I have, or is it going to come to the board after it's been delivered? I, I think it would be prudent to, in the motion of all this, that um, we authorize, that you all authorize you to come in and sign it so it doesn't have to be within that okay. meeting. Um, and then I'm, I'm witnessing this, I'm attesting mm -hmm. um, to this with my signature. Um, name and title. And then, um, what, what were you were all attesting to? To who? Um, that I signed it. That 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 Denise.
Denise is the um, authorized signer of um, these loan uh, of the loan agreement and of these um, subsequent annual bills as they come in. Um, bank qualified um, certificate that we are um, tax exempt and uh, um, it's covered by insurance. Okay, so this is me. So here, let us hear again. Um, here, right? Signing, yeah, and then printed name and title. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is our insurance company information, which I need to fill out, but just Primex's name and phone number mm -hmm. is all that's needed there, if you would. Um, I'm going to sign here, and you're going to fill this in? Yes. Don't forget. Oh, no. He'll be calling me first thing in the morning. Exhibit H, this is the lessee certificate. Um, I will fill this out. It's essentially, it's asking for what is the purpose of the vehicle? How will it be used? Um, so it's a police cruiser and mm -hmm. where is the funding com coming from and how do you know that there's funds in that account? And we went, you know, he and I went over how to fill that out. Okay. And it's your name and printed name and title at the bottom. Um, I will keep it scanned for you, yes. Um, and here you are attesting to that you have, this is this is where payments go, and that okay. you are noticing where payments go. So okay. if you would sign there, print name, title, and date. It's probably better at a board meeting, although essentially a motion could have directed you to do this, um, filling out what billing, billing is going to. Um, the escrow letter, because um, the cruiser is delayed and not coming until sometime in November now, they're oh. setting up an escrow. So um, this authorizes them to um, put the funds in escrow until we take delivery of the vehicle. Okay. Something's going wrong on it? Or? No, I think that's just for delaying shipment. Let's hope it's not a freight liner flash. <laughs> um, and then this is attesting to our non-taxable status and the amount of the loan in a non-taxable status, $32,910, mm -hmm. if you would. This is equipment and the cruiser, right? Or is it just the cruiser? That is the cruiser only. Cruiser only, okay. Um, so signature and date and print name and title. And that's the end of that. Yes, I was looking at the equipment from, and we were able to do that from CIP. Yes. Okay. October 7th. No, I was trying to make sure that was the next right there. To so the right of that further, yeah. yeah. If you would go now yeah. after the flag, please make the motion to approve Denise to be the signatory for all the <laughs> cruise releasing documents. I move we appoint Denise to be signatory on the cruise release. All right, I'll second that again. All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
good. All right. Yeah, yeah just a little bit. Okay, so then we're going down to GRN1, policy review procedure. I submitted a, a, a procedure to Caroline. I'm not sure, she, did she share it with you guys on the policy review? Um, yeah. That I'm recommending. Yep. I'm looking to have um, the select board um, to accomplish the goal of the town administrator will keep a priority list of the policies that need adoption or changes and policies will be sent one at a time to the board for review. Week one policy will be given to the select board with highlighted comments received by the town administrator on the recommendations needed. Week two, the select board will give feedback on what they believe can be changed to the policy based on their experience and recommendations from the town administrator. In week three, we're looking for the board will approve the policy and a new policy will be submitted for the next review. That's what I'm proposing that we go and, yeah. and one at a time, you know, and not have a big pile of it. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. this will be something we can. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, can go yeah. forward with. Yeah. All right. So do you want to yeah. make a motion to accept? Sure. I'll, I'll make a motion. We accept the policy review procedure as presented. Okay. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So that's all we have to do on the must do for the agenda, right? Except for the non-public. Um, there is another purchase order in here from the highway department. There's a little bit of miscellaneous here. Um, the police chief alerted to you, this to you um, last week. He's got an officer um, yeah. who was due for a pay increase that was already approved and yep. now it's coming due. Yep. So if you would... Um, do we need to make a motion? Because we already approved it. We I don't think you need to. Make, yeah, yeah, I think we just need to, to sign, sign it because we already right. approved it. Likewise, this is um, the paper appointing Jessica to SRPC, okay. which you don't need to vote on because you already have. But if you could each sign the bottom Here. of that. Okay. This is from Health Trust. It lists me as the benefits administration uh, administrator, which is the primary contact and the person who um, administers um, the benefits to our employees. Mm -hmm. So they just want a signature that you want me to still be that contact person. Should we make a motion? Yes. Okay. Make a motion that we maintain Caroline Kendall as the primary um, BA for the um, um, Health Trust. All those in favor say aye. 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 This is um, the letter for George and Highway Truck um, that's been discussed. in favor say aye. 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 We won't do it tonight, but can you put George's computer back on the agenda for next week? And um, I think we 
can go ahead and go with that battle break. Yeah. Is, is he going to get that through Tom? You know? Yes. Okay. All right, so C2 budget versus nothing else on here, right? Um, welfare, non public. What, when we go? You want to do it now? Whatever you want. Right, you can do it now or you can do it at the end of the meeting after budget stuff. How much time do we have to do? Um, like an hour. Okay. Uh, uh, you want to take care of it now? Because then you, you, yep, okay. That's right. So we need a motion to go into Non public RSA 91 A colon 32C for welfare. Uh, so moved. All right. Roll call. Miles? Yes. 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 We are now going to move to non public. Are you cameras. going to be adjourning after your non public? We no. are going to go into just dealing with budget. Budget workshop. Budget workshop. No more decisions, but budget discussion. Tonight? Yes. yes. 